Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, let's just have a little check in on how we're looking and sounding. I think everything's uh, ticking along all right. Please do let me know if um, if there are any problems visually or with the, the sound. There won't be a lot of sound today due to the nature of the, the game we're playing. Um, let me stop the background music for a minute. And I can pop that to one side, hopefully. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then let's pop this up. So we're we're resuming playing um, Portal, the 1986 uh, computer novel, um, written by Rob Swigert, um, published by Activision, and it's um, it's an interesting thing. Uh, last time I attempted to stream it, unfortunately. Uh, I had I missed out a crucial piece of information um, in working out uh, how to get it running properly. So it looked like it was working fine, but we weren't able to load a saved game, and that's just down to one thing. So a little bit of useful information for anybody trying to play the game. Uh, so this is the Amiga version. Anybody trying to play the Amiga version of the game today is you need to either be playing it on or emulating it on. The Amiga 500 only. It won't work on any other model. It won't work on the 500 plus. It won't work on any of the, the subsequent Amigas. That's the only one uh, where the load function will will work as expected. Um, and you'll kind of see see how that works when we get there in a moment. So let's get let's get that going in the background while I work this out. I mean, I think so. I think that loading problem is. Probably because this original version of Portal is tied somewhat into the architecture of um, of how Amigas work, by the looks of it. And I'll I'll just mention that briefly when I can show you the the game itself. So this should be us. You should be able to see the chat window and the notebook window, or oh, another note from um, from our previous uh, attempt at. Uh, at playing portal is I hadn't realized the um, my notepad was automatically correcting my spelling so unfortunately it was miscorrecting my spelling um, so uh, scion became poison and it decided it didn't like how the game spelled Ezekiel so it changed that for us as well um, so that's that's now, uh, now corrected and shouldn't be troubling us any further great so hopefully you should be seeing the game window as well I think at least as long as far as the statistics in front of me appear, uh, it looks like we've got a nice steady stream, um, which is visible to to everyone hopefully. Um, but do let me know if that's not the case. Welcome to World, there, everybody. So uh, let's check in. With chat. Hello to so I Kluberville. I apologise if I got your username wrong. Uh, it was hard for me to uh, pronounce that. We're going to be playing a bit of um, a bit of Portal from 1986, a computer novel. Um, and to get going, if I yeah, I'm in the right window. Fabulous. Um, we need to type in a name. So. Is it working? Oh, friends, it's not working. Okay, that's interesting. There was me a. Oh, I think I need to do that. Here we go. Now we're good. So I used uh, cat sequences as the login name. So um, when we tried to load before and we were having errors, um, nothing came up. It's asked for us to uh, start a new save slot when we did this, but now it should give us the option. So now we can start from the beginning or continue. Um, so if you'd entered a new name, such as Homer, um, then you get to choose a slot. And I think from having a look at other disk images of this when I was trying to work out what was going on, I think it's useful to know there are probably at least three slots that you can um, pick from yeah there's a 
one, two, three, I think. So there's a blank one at the top there which you can't see. So I'm gonna cancel. Um, so I should be able to backtrack here, having shown you that. And go to cat sequences and continue. Here we go. And we'll get the get the same intro I think as before, so I'll be quiet for that. Okay, it might take a minute to load in here. Fab, we're in. Great. So, if um, for a point of uh, reference for where we left off before, let's have a look in central processing. There should be several red documents in there now. So they have the little um, double chevron. Yeah, to their left. There you go. I think Chilink Ref five four seven five o two was the last entry we read. Um, so. I think we we did it correctly. I think we're back in the game. Uh, so the only uh, oh most circuits move slowly now. Oh, there's some um, some really characterful uh, stuff that comes from more interactions with Homer. Um, they're quite quite sorrowful as well. So uh, the stuff I was saying about this being related to the uh, the architecture of the Amiga is that you can uh, you can click and drag windows kind of. So, I mean, Amiga was on a very basic level a, uh, a Windows-based system, um, but not to the sense um, that we think of it now, where I could minimise stuff and have um, multiple different applications layered over each other. It doesn't work like that. There's kind of an application window and perhaps Workbench would be behind it uh, if you're using your Amiga. Um, but that's something interesting to note. And um, curiously so, the um, I've cropped off the picture a little bit because the game only sort of um, appears in this sort of widescreen aspect but actually the screen extends with just whatever the background colour is for a little bit below that to make it kind of a 4.3 display for um, a, a, like a conventional CRT monitor so just a little, little bit of trivia there for you and the only other thing I think I discovered in my investigations is if you right click you get the um, like the master menu, so it's like a secret hidden menu that none of the instructions tell you about. Um, and I only found that out by trying to trawl through some YouTube videos to find out what might be wrong with what I was doing. Um, and so here you actually get the um, you get the chance to quit properly um, rather than just turn your Amiga off. Um, and you actually get some of these sort of um, outside the fiction credits for people. Um, so we can see, yeah, see who they credit for this. So we've got um, written by Rob Swigert produced by Brad Freger. Um, I think I mentioned both of those uh, last time we played. Um, so it says, programmed by Nexacorp. So I guess Nexacorp were under the, the wing of Activision. Um, but who who was in Nexacorp? Don't know exactly, but probably some of these some of these folks. So concept by Freger and Swigert. Designed by Swigert, Gilman Louie and Greg Omi. Graphics by R. Anton Wiyaya. I'm very sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Robert Coston and Gilman Louie, so a little small group there. Um, and then, yeah, so the Amiga version was pro uh, programmed by R. Anton. We are, uh, apologies again, sounds by Russell Lieblick. Um, and then some special thanks as well to uh, Peter, Kam Peter Kaminsky. Sounds familiar. I wonder if Peter Kaminsky's a, a writer. That's why that sounds familiar. But so that's a little, a little bit of a. How do I get out of this? Oh no! Have I closed the whole thing? Oh no! Maybe oh. Back in a sec, folks. Well, there you go. I know not to do that again. So we just have to go through that little. Little login and intro section again. Oh, well, how is everyone today? It's um, 
it's going all right here. I've I've been looking forward to streaming this again. It's been a few a few days since we last tried it, and I was frustrated that he, um, uh, there were problems before, frankly, because I, um, it wasn't as straightforward as I imagined it would be to get back in. I mean, it, it turns out that the function that I thought would be there was there. It's just um, it doesn't exist if you're using the wrong the wrong Amiga version. So let's try again. I think we should. Ooh, no, hang on. Let's do. There we go. Now we're in. I think. We're good. I think we're good now. Yep. Okay. So I'll log in. Okay. Or it accidentally closed the program. Could be fine. Yeah, so, um. I haven't uh, talked about the fiction of the the game, so we're we're using a computer interface, and we're kind of taking the part of an astronaut who was, I think, sent in into space in two thousand and four, sent on a mission to observe a binary star somewhere. The mission failed, um, so essentially they were in cryo sleep all the way there and all the way back. Um, and when they returned to Earth, they found it um, much altered and completely devoid of human life. Um, which is understandably disturbing and really hard to find a working computer terminal and one they could interface with. They found this one in Chicago. Um, we've just kind of just about got it started booting up. Um, there's a um, an ailing storytelling AI that's um, that's kind of our guide and is sort of slowly unlocking entries in various databases for us. Um, and I think I think I'm going to go for geography. As our next topic to, to check out, um, because there wasn't a lot of information in our last entry, as I recall, but um, it did mention a few different locations that may be, may be pertinent. So I think I'll head there, and then failing that, we'll just work our way through the categories again um, and hope we find something interesting. Um, and uh, you'll also note, hopefully, that some of the useful information that we found out so far is in our notes. I don't know how useful it is to have notes in this game, but I thought it wise to take a few anyway. I feel I feel this is probably going to be quite a, um, um, a linear guided thing, but then there might be a few options for flexibility in there, so let's let's see how it goes. So geography. I mean, uh, I hope it goes without saying, but I, I will be reading everything out. Okay, data space is temporarily empty. Uh, for geography. Interesting. Well, let's start at the beginning then. Med 10. Viral diseases, we've read that one, okay. Yeah, there was, in some of the history we read, there was mention of a, um, a possible um, viral outbreak. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the, <laughs> So this is a prescribed database. Um, we're not supposed to be here, um, but I think Homer can get us in. But there's nothing there at the moment. That's fine. Yeah. So I think, as I was, I was trying to say a moment ago, the the without intending to, I found a game that hues in some parts closer to the the current reality for us than I had hoped. But I think it's hopefully abstract enough and uh, oh, we've read all those as well and um, I don't know, uh, fictional enough that it's, um, it's not too much okay so who hasn't got anything new there military not really their military hasn't really come up I don't think in any capacity also a prescribed database. Uh, DNA code overridden by Homer. Anything there? No, okay. How about life support? Yeah, nobody there. Interesting. Uh, geography was a bust. Wasatch. I don't remind myself what Wasatch was. Um, oh, genealogy. Since around 2010, the Utah region, Western Alliance. The Western Alliance seems to be um, 
the name for most of North America. Okay. So I feel like there should be more there should be more things around. Maybe we haven't unlocked everything that we needed to. If only we could mine link, this would go so much faster. True. Uh, that's not an ominous portent of anything very much. Okay, so let's read the last thing we read again. Charlink is one of the most important regional nodes, controlling data traffic throughout the Midwestern portion of the Northwest Alliance, formerly North America, from Montreal to Denver Warrens. Um, oh, there, this is our graphic for it. I think that's the dome we're in. We're in kind of in, um, well, at least a similar dome. We're in uh, Chicago City, which has been preserved under a large dome currently. Um, all right, so nothing going there. Sometimes if you click on the thing, you get a little. No, that might have just been a one-time update, might it? Sometimes uh, you might get something interesting there. Edmod is individual educational modules, aptitudes, and programming. Ooh, individual programming. That's, there's definitely some ominous undertones. Right, so nothing there apart from Homer, so let's talk to Homer, if we can. Ah, more narration. Ah, just a few images are beginning to form, yet I see now that the Chicago link is important. It points to the source. A boy. There was a boy somewhere near the Chicago Warrens. Peter DeVore. I've forgotten much about him. I must know more. He was important, though. I'm now beginning the character index. Ah. Okay, I think we're going to have... Oh, another one. Oh, did I... Oh, no, this is new. That's him. That's the boy. Peter DeVore. I've forgotten so much about him. I must know more. I've opened a character index in all personal databases. Peter's statistics threw us off, I think. His Edmod programming, his Wasatch files, his life support and psychological parameters all fell within normal bounds. Neither the human's concern nor we could have anticipated what he did, despite the prognostics. And we were distracted. We were distracted. We were at fault. Oh. Oh. Homer. Oh, this is an interesting breadcrumb trail. We've got another one. This name fails to convey much. Peter Devore. Peter, of course, is the rock, his name in the ancient Greek language. We have run all the correlations there. Often of no use, these correlations, but interesting somehow. Peter, the rock, who discovered the portal. <gasps> Title drop. It began with an error. Peter tried to enter Wasatch for genealogical information when central processing misconnected him. Somehow Peter entered the wrong database. He entered Psylink. We must look into central processing's records. Okay, well that was a very direct um, hint of where to go. Um, so I wonder if this... You said you've got character information now. Can I have a look at Wasatch or somewhere and see if Peter DeVore's in there? I can. Let's go non-linearly. Ooh, hello. Okay, designated male. And we can maybe look at family tree, physiology and ESP. And basic core IQ of Peter DeVore. Uh, 315, 2059, Springfield. Um, I'm going to type some notes over this because um, it feels like I'm more involved in the story. So, scion equations, I wonder what that's all about. So, I'm going to put in date of birth. Um, 
Springfield in parentheses. Which Springfield? I don't know. Is is well, hang on. When was the Simpsons come along? Are these are these have we aligned two uh two Simpsons references here? Um okay, I think that's all I need to know at this moment. Let's go back into the game window. Let's have a look. What can we click on? Family tree. Okay, we can't click on any of those things. Oh, interesting. Oh, hang on. I might have been doing it right. Let's try again. Okay, the uh, gender symbol just changed colour. Oh, here we go. We can get a family tree. Um, so there's a divorce side of the family, there's a Malay side of the family, and uh, Peter's parents were Simi and Ran. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay, no, there's this one. We have to do this in a specific, specific order as well. Um, okay, percentiles of... Uh, Oh, I think I'm going a bit too fast for Alan because this is the um, this is the IQ one. Uh, right, so percentiles of I guess uh, capacity. Um, very good at maths. Um, pretty good at art. Pretty good at music. Pretty good at linguistics. Um, all round, I'd say very accomplished. So, physiology and ESP. Let's try that, and I'll give it a second this time. There we go. Um, had big ES. Hang on, what are these? I'm sure there's a section in my um, manual that will tell me about these sections. I want to make sure what I'm looking at is what I think I'm looking at. So Peter DeVore, right, had uh, ESP, extrasensory perception, um, up to about 80%. Fat is is fat. Fat to weight ratio, percentage of body weight that is fatty tissue. Uh, slow was is slow twitch muscles percentage of muscle mass conditioned for human uh, endurance and stamina and then fast is fast twitch muscles percentage of muscle mass conditioned for burst of speed and strength interesting interesting things to record right so we've uh, I don't hang on. Must remember, I'm using uh, an ancient keyboard um, and uh, and joystick probably to uh, to interact with this this high tech uh, computer system. So um, it would make sense if there are some delays. Okay, I think that's all we can get from that section. Interesting. I'm not going to make any more notes on that. I was um, I stumbled a little bit over the reading because I was um, also thinking about um, how old Peter would be if we we're in 2106. But um, yeah, absolutely possible that um, Peter would be around um, in his forties, I believe. Okay, so we've been there. Um, where else? Ha oh, life support. If Peter divorce locked as a character, we can see if Peter divorce around, which is uh, crucial, frankly. Um, oh my goodness, there's all these, should I see what these categories are as well? Yeah, yeah, this is in the manual too. So we can go through this. Um, I'll go from kind of left bottom. Um, we'll do this left hand column first. Uh, blood pressure. Okay, it seems like they've got blood pressure. Which is nice, temperature. Face and extra peripheral temperature. I mean, they've got temperature, I think. I think that's what that means. Um, respiration and GSR. Okay. Um, we've got Galvanic skin response. Skin conductance shows emotional response when sweat glands are activated. That was hard to say. 
and resp respiration, measure of breaths per minute. Um, okay. Uh, heart and heart rate and EEG. Uh, it is, yeah, electroencephalogram. Uh, electrical activity in the brain. So let's hope there's some of that. Uh, oh, increasing. Interesting. Um, a hundred beats per minute. Is that right? A heart rate seems a little high. Tension. Where's the section on tension? Because I don't know what all these mean. I mean, is is Peter afraid of corgis? Is that what? There you go. Oh, in certain parts of the body. Um, and luckily it explains what they are because I'm not uh, familiar with all the terms. So um, first we've got um, masseter. That's the jaw muscle. So how clenched your jaw is. And then frontalis, which is the forehead muscle apparently. Um, trying to flex mine as I say that. Um, Korg is corrugator, the eyebrow, that's a great word isn't it, the corrugator, eyebrow muscle. Um, I'm not sure I can tell the difference between my forehead muscle and my eyebrow muscle, which isn't, well I guess I can. Uh, depressor, muscle at the corners of the mouth, oh surely uh, lifters or something, what's, what's, more, uh, what's more hopeful than depressors? Um, so Okay, so at the end of this section in the manual it says you may also get oscilloscope readings in certain instances usually through central processing, which is intriguing. Well, so everything that I've seen here suggests that this person is currently alive, which is exciting. So under DNA and hormones, which is it's quite a quite a thing to have there, um, can I find the thing for that? Endocrine is going to be my guess for one of them. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know why DNA is put in here. So it's the thyroxine and endorphins. Oh, there you go. Are the two things that are being measured here. And they're pretty steady. Uh, neurotransmitters, presumably. Uh, where's this? Here we go. Um, As acetyl acetylcholine acetylcholine mediates nerve impulses mediates nerve impulses travel across synaptic cleft electrically excites motor end plates during normal parasympathetic muscle activity um, and I'm not entirely, entirely sure what that means um, but that's steady and as is epinephrine released during a sympathetic fight or flight response. Oh, so if uh, Pete was having an emergency, then that might spike. Um, stimulates glycogen breakdown in the muscles preparatory to action. Fantastic. And glycogen. I, I don't know if we're going to... I think this is all here for, for colour, really. I don't know if... We'd use any of these in kind of a game, a gamified sense, um, but it'd be interesting if we do have to. So we've got blood glucose up first. Glycogen used to power muscle contraction, stored in muscles and liver, controls blood sugar levels. Next, we've got um, phosphorylase inhibits glycogen synthesis, which brings the glycogen metabolism full circle. Well, that sounds exciting. Um, insulin. Um, increases liver capacity to synthesize glycogen. It's all about the glycogen, friends. Um, GLON is um, glucagon. Increases blood sugar levels by stimulating breakdown of glycogen in liver, as epinephrine does in muscles. Uh, sure. Well, I mean, that all looks like... He is alive and around, which is cool. So that we did Wasatch and life support. Um, 
he accidentally went into Silink. I wonder if there's anything there now. Into my override. Welcome to Silink. Silink database provides information and evaluation of historical and experimental data involving psychic technologies. As such, it comprises the most complete collection of limited AI capabilities for storing and manipulating information about psychic sciences. Silink contains historical information, including individual personal monitor crystals of selected individuals with high psi potential, as well as dream, telepathic, precognitive and other extrasensory data. Silink is a prescribed database and unauthorised entry is forbidden. Only citizens with appropriate DNA encodes may enter. Central Processing may process other applications. See Central Processing Geneva node for further details. Hmm. Well, that gives us just a little bit of a backstory there. It's the old Sci Silink Sci symbol. Um, well, cool. So that we've got a bit more colour on that, which is nice. And then I guess the only one that's no med ten is related to people probably, isn't it? Is med ten related to people? Let's find out. I oh, know it's events. Okay, that threw me off. I guess we've already seen the um, the personal medical um, category and life support, haven't we? Um, well, psychology then, because I imagine um, if we've unlocked uh, a person's information, then we ooh. Okay, we get to see all this as well. Well, let's have a look at their emotion. Okay, we've got more bar graphs. Um, let me find out what this is. Uh, so, uh, first one is maturity. Develop sense of awareness and acceptance of oneself as a person. Uh, well, about 70%, I'd say. Oh no, maybe not. So if that's naught to twenty, creative. Oh, about yeah, fifty percent, fifty percent. Uh, hostility, aggressiveness, misdirected against others, one sign of immaturity. Yeah, so fifty percent hostile and immature, which is not great. And self-esteem, ooh, just over. Okay, just over the halfway mark. Really interesting that this um. This game is kind of qu quantifying a personality, um, sort of openly quantifying a personality when that's usually what a game is trying to hide um, and, uh, and giving you a qualitative kind of decision making process. But we're, we're just getting some figures here. So this is personal growth. Uh, personal growth. Measure maturity rate over time of school age subjects. Uh, I'm quite sure how this okay. functions really. Introspection, interpersonal intelligence, awareness of self and access to one's own feelings and emotions. Hmm. Core intelligence. Let's see what's that. Oh yeah, we've uh, we've looked at those those bits of information. And the basic core IQ, is that the same as in the other? I think so. Oh, that's weird. So math is high, but science is low. Um, which is interesting. And art and music are high. I think that's, that's somewhat different to what we saw before. Right, so I think we found out kind of all we can about Peter DeVore on this... Um, this technical level, unless there's something in Edmond, or if I misinterpret what Edmond is all about. No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Yeah, more categories. So, logic. Okay. Um, where's here? It is it's another partition bar graph? Uh, mathematical IQ is here. Deductive reasoning is here, and 
inductive reasoning. So the difference defined is deductive reasoning is the ability to reach conclusions from numerous apparently unrelated facts. That's low. So inductive reasoning ability to prove the steps needed to reach a stated conclusion from certain starting parameters. Hmm. Uh, fairly high. Interesting. Something to think about. Uh, so let's pop that, pop that down. Um, basic core IQ, is that the same stuff as we've seen in other places? No, each, each place has kind of different priorities, which is interesting. So lingui linguistics, is that what this is? Yeah, I think it's linguistics, writing, art and music by the looks of it. Interesting memory. So we've got attention span. Measure of intensity and duration of intellectual focus and concentration. And then uh, short is short term memory. Um, so that's pretty good. Learn. Oh, that's that's a weird abbreviation. So I guess it would have been Lear if they left the N off instead. But that's the learning curve. Measure of the speed with which one, or look at the wrong page, can become familiar with and use a new concept or skill. And then long term memory. Ability to understand, integrate, and retain concepts and skills, and recall and use them over time. Um, yeah, reasonable, I'd say. Um, and then social adjustment. I like that um, graphic. Some interesting graphical representations in this game. Uh, right, so I'm guessing this is going to be spacey, spatial, body, and so social. But let's find out. So we've got spatial orientation, capacity for visual imagery, and the mental manipulation of objects in three-dimensional space. Uh, fairly high on the higher side. Uh, about halfway through is bodily kinesthetic, developed fine motor control and or skillful object manipulation. And social adjustment, interpersonal intelligence, sensitivity to the feelings and motivations of others, an expression of innate leadership talent. Oh, interesting to group those things together. I, um, yeah, so that, I think the social skills perhaps lacking a little bit behind um, raw ability with things like maths by the looks of it. And I think that's it for that one. So let's go to central processing, processing as we were originally did. Kansas to Wasatch, ref 427203. Central Processing, ref 427203. Kansas to Wasatch. Central Processing finds peripheral traces of this coding error that, uh, well, lost me place, that allowed Peter DeVore Springfield West to access the prescribed DB, Silink 42, at Wallace, Kansas when he was attempting a perfectly legitimate entry to the genealogical records at Wasatch, Utah. CP Directive changed the access name Silink, which vocalised too close to Silink, despite the absence of the plosive P sound. Should you be, should I be saying Psylink? I don't think I should be saying Psylink, mostly because it's going to blow out the mic. Um, Matrix failure suggests a Wallace-Wasatch confusion as possible alternate. New access name for Scilink is SciTech, Science and Technology Database. This despite the fact that Peter was not accessing Scilink at the time, but Wasatch. Peter had turned away from his vocal input receptors at the time. So nobody, nobody before has accidentally called <laughs> Scilink Scilink <laughs> and had this error. Oh my goodness, the uh, Dangers of, of vocal inputs, eh? Uh, for more information, see Silink Quick Tour. Special clearance required. 050320700. Dorm. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Oh, look at a little, little graphic showing the two locations, I think. Okay. Well, I guess we go to we go to Silink. P 
a siren. Anything new? No. Just the um the overview that we've seen before. Okay, and that recommends us the central processing Geneva node, which is fine. Wow. Curious. Central processing again? Or maybe SciTech though, because that was in the mix, wasn't it? Portal. General Science and Technology Information. Current entry, Portal. Portal. The doorway, originally discovered, or rather uncovered, by Peter DeVore of Springfield West. Several orbits after initial access, he attributed the beginnings to a computer error while he was accessing genealogical records at Wasatch via Science Link, Chicago Intersection and Datasat 18. He was inadvertently connected to Wallace Silink, a prescribed database for someone of Peter's profile and age. The portal opened into the realm, making the migration possible. Very little is known about the portal at this time. But come on, if you've named a... Uh, <laughs> if you've named a uh, an access point, the portal, and if you've... Uh, let me get my mouse free and then I can write some notes. Here we go. Um, if you've named an access point, the portal, and then... You've had discovered some kind of real or virtual location that you call the realm. And then something happens called the migration. If you've if you know enough to name them, then I suspect you kind of have more information than that, don't you? Interesting. Well that's in my notes now. So, if we go back here. Will there be anything for... No, nothing about the migration. Or the realm. But central processing might have something. No, curious. Um, history. No. Well, if you didn't catch it from um, from last time, check out the uh, the history section from our last stream uh, from uh, nineteen ninety nineteen ninety nine. That was uh, that's quite a blast. Um, okay. Well, uh, military. Okay, nothing there. Um, so we're in SciTech, back to SciLink maybe? No. Okay, that's all right. So, I think we should go back to Homer. We seem to have uncovered quite a chunk of uh, of narrative, as it were. Am I getting ahead of the story? It comes slowly, but it is coming back. The new diseases and all that new science information, there will be so much data. For example, looking at Peter's associates, there is D.S. Gad, known as Mentor, who suffered from one of the new genetic diseases. He too is important to the story. I've added his name to the index. Ooh, okay, I'm going to write down D.S. Gad as well. 
uh, if I can get the mouse free. Mouse free. There we go. Mouse is free. Um, we'll pop that note down, and then we'll pop here. We'll pop in asterisk. Dsgad. Also known as mentor. It's their world net handle, probably. Um, uh, I guess I don't really want to put uh, dash genetic disease next to anybody, but I think that's, that's all we've been given so far, isn't it? Okay, that's that's something to go on. Thank you, Homer. Um, do you have any more narration to offer? Oh, hang on. No, have I got this correct? There we go. No. Well, I guess that means we can check all the people places for um, for DS Gad. I kind of see if they're around as well. Given that they developed a genetic disease, whoa. Regent Sable. Interesting. So Dipmore Gad is going to be DS Gad. Um, so I can change my, my notes about that. So um, this is not current, is it? But let's see their, their history. Oh, hang on. You've got a death day. Yeah, so you're not around. You died in 2078, um, which was a while ago now. Okay. So the Sorrels and the Gads, um, David and Corrine, are the parents of Ditmore. Physiology and ESP, um, low fat level. I guess that's good. Um, middling ESP though. You'll never, you'll never make it into into SciLink, or is it SciTech? Okay, good at maths and music. Linguistics is pretty good. Not so, not so artistic. That's fine. Well, let's. I'm going to make a few more notes. If I may. Oh my goodness, I lost my window. Um, but I think you can still see the game screen, which is good. Did more escad. Uh, mental genetic disease. And then that's nine, twenty-two. 1960 hang on 1965 you live to a, a very ripe age dear more uh, and were considerably older than Peter Devore which is intriguing um, okay Interesting. Well, I guess we're going to have a look at Regent Sable while we're here, aren't we? So, Regent Sable is. Ooh, hello. Who is Regent Sable? Is Regent name or title? And you appear to still be alive, also, which is um, intriguing. Let's have a look at your family tree. Oh yeah, that does appear to be your name, um, I guess. Um, Susan and Scott parents, um, a family of Sables and a family of Deleuze. Physiology, um, lots of fast twitch muscles, not so many slow twitch muscles, and very little body fat. And then... I'd say pretty high aptitude across those disciplines there that they um, have been measuring. So interesting. I don't know. I wonder who Legion Sable is in the scheme of things. Let's pop them in. Don't really know anything about you, but you're gonna get a you're gonna get a note entry. Here we go. 
um, I know your date of birth. So you're you're pretty advanced in years too by now, I would say. Um, but then I'm guessing life expectancy is, is quite long under under ni norm normal circumstances. Um, because most disease had been cured, um, we were informed by other other information on the, the system. So um, people had the chance to live long lives. Well, that's everything there. So if we were to look at life support, say, for Dick Morgad, I suspect we're probably not going to see a lot of anything being as uh, as Dipmore is no longer with us. Oh, interesting. No, that is that is data. So either that's last recorded data, um, it doesn't have like a timestamp or anything on it, or. Okay, it wouldn't, interesting, it doesn't seem to be indicating any kind of decline in um, activity or condition, which you'd think there would be some if the, I guess unless the person died suddenly. Interesting, I'm not quite sure what, Oh. Okay, oh, they uh, found a, a uh, problem with this graphic, haven't we? So, uh, this looks like the most interesting stat in the neurotransmitters. So, the um, acetyl, acetylcholine seems to decline rapidly, and the epinephrine seems to uh, increase rapidly, and that's the fight or flight stuff so yeah maybe that is the indication of of a uh, of an incident um, that caused caused the death of them interesting I wasn't expecting there to be anything there really and then Regent Sable who is apparently alive and hopefully well okay just click through these to see if there's any particular pattern that Seems to indicate anything. So these people then, who are alive, seem would seem to be out there somewhere in the world, but I don't know how I'd go about contacting them. There's been no message of, of chat messaging. Um, all these have increased, which is interesting. Um, Hang on, was that where I just was? No, it wasn't. It's fine. Neurotransmitters. Okay. And glycogen. Our friend glycogen. Steady. Okay. So Dipmore is doing okay, I think. Um, and psychology and Edmod is working now, isn't it? So, did more. Um, mature and hostile, which is interesting, and with low self esteem. Uh, that's intriguing. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of reflects what we've seen before, doesn't it? Regent Sable. Um, oh, quite mature and not very hostile. So Regent Sable might be the... Uh, with fairly high self-esteem. So that might be the most balanced person to speak to if we uh, run into anybody. Um, of the two two other living humans that we seem to know about at this point in time. 
and okay, yeah, good all rounder. Um, so then let's have a peek at uh, Edmod, and then back to central processing maybe. So we've got Ditmore. Um, logic. Hi, Ditmore. Logic. Okay. Um, uh, better at math than deductive or inductive reasoning. Um, social adjustment. What do we think? I think it might be. Uh, well, you know what? Pretty good for somebody who is quite aggressive. With low self esteem. Pretty good. Pretty good social stats there. Um, memory. Okay. Uh, not great long term memory, but then. I wonder if this accounts for. takes into account um, things that happen during the aging process as well. Intriguing. Alright, well, let's check in on Regent Sable. Hello, Regent. Okay. So Regent Sable, whoever they are, seems quite um, quite capable, probably from these uh, these analyses. Yeah, um, quite well and quite capable, I would say. Interesting. Um. Well, central processing then. That's where I said we go. Nothing there. Interesting. So let's check maybe SciTech and SciLink again. Nothing there. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm thinking the other thing we could try is Med 10 if we're going to find out about new conditions that have occurred. New genetic diseases. Here we go. Okay, the Med10 Medical Database Overview 1990 to 2090. Human medical technology developed rapidly toward the end of the 20th century. Bacterial diseases were virtually banished by 2025, viral diseases by 2042, and systemic disorders, heart, artery, and almost all cancers were effectively treated by the 2070s. Well, that's a dream, isn't it? Longevity treatments were widespread around the same time, allowing for a life expectancy. 114.3 years. Well, that answers some of my questions. Unfortunately, a new series of disorders appeared under the general title of genetic diseases. These were subtle errors of the basic DNA coding for the human genotype. They were thought to result from the as yet little understood interplay between the mind and the body. In effect, they were psychic diseases, small emotional or psychological rearrangements of the DNA, a cascade effect. With the introduction of neurophage weapons, ooh, some transient genetic disorders appeared, though the effects were at first time limited. During the Burma Wars, the effects of mass NP weapons surfaced with more far-ranging effects. Later, during the Mind Wars, crikey, you didn't tell me about any of this happening. The new NP weapons introduced the latest in the genetic disease series, genetic abulia disease. Med10 database and the medical diagnostic AI is responsible have designated the major genetic diseases into the following taxonomy. Genetic drift syndrome. Proprioceptive, I think I said that right, degenerative, generate, sorry, degeneration disease. Holographic memory distortion syndrome. Genetic abulia disease. This taxonomy accounts for over 99.746% of all reported cases. 
Hmm, intriguing. Are we going to get some more? No more dig data there. Interesting. Well, I think um, we're, yeah, we're an hour into the stream. I'm going to just pause for a sec to um, drink a little water, take care of my uh, my throat, as there's a lot of talking involved in this one. Um, and I'll be I'll be right back in a minute. Please chat amongst yourselves, friends, uh, and I'll yeah I'll speak to you in a second. Okay, we're we're back. Let me make sure I'm in the window in a in a helpful way. Yeah, I think so. Great. Um, and hello to everyone in chat. Um, you're very welcome. We're going to continue playing some more. Of this very interesting um, kind of uh, guided novel uh, that that is Portal. Um, and if anybody wants to say hello in the chat. Then, then please do. Um, it'd be lovely to hear from you. Let's go back to home. Well, I feel like that might be a good, a good point for that. Yeah, here we go. So the latest home narration. We've rerun the diagnostics over a million times, and we can only conclude that it was a human coding error when Peter got into the wrong database. No glitches showed up. It was human error. Peter was cross-connected with Silink in Wallace. As a science ad adept with low introspection, he should never have had access to Silink. It happened. and Silink accepted access, Peter was in, and that was the beginning. From there it was inevitable, so the prognostics tell us, many years after the fact, that Peter should discover the portal. Did Silink cause Peter's connection with Wanda? Her psychological profile fit a very high, no, fit a high psi potential, but she was on her way to Vega. Psytech would have more information. Wanda Vega Psytech? Okay, let's write this down, in case I forget. Um, uh, pop, um, okay, hang on, above this note, here we go. Wanda, Oh, that's not a spell, Wanda. Wanda Vega. Psytech. Alright. And then, let's go to Psytech. I will go to Psytech first before trying to look up um, who Wanda is. Oh, okay. Uh, local star map sounds cool. Vega, bright star 29 light years from Earth, served as beacon for the Vega fleet. Much mythological data exists in the historical record about Vega, including the story of the herd boy and the weaving girl, separated by the River of Heaven, also called the Milky Way. Interesting, this feels like it's uh, thematic material. There we go, Altair. Vega, nice, very clear. Milky Way. Uh, sorry, I made that sound. That feels like a mistake. Um, great. So we read that. Uh, Vega fleet. General science and technology information. Current entry: Vega fleet. Vega fleet. Ever since the 1980s, when the first evidence of planetary bodies around Vega and other nearby stars was discovered. Human beings dreamed of emigration. The Vega fleet was constructed in lunar orbit in the late 2020s and early 2030s, with the first ship complement completed in 2033. It was launched three years later with a full complement of 525 passengers in cryofield suspension. Soon ships were leaving on a regular basis for the appropriate stars in near space. Vega, although unsuitable for human use, was a convenient beacon star, and so the fleet was named after the star. A romantic mythology grew up around the fleet of passengers, who would, of course, never return to Earth. Hmm. Uh, how do we get the thing? There we go. I'm not quite sure what... Oh, is that... Those are like... They might be the ships um, heading through space. Nice. Okay, that's exhausted that avenue. Um, did mention that the mythology would be in the history section of our database. So let's have a look there. Okay, Vega ref436745 at 2. 
historical cultural data link entry. Vega redevore Peter via Edmod. Ref oh uh you have this flashing in the call there. By ref four three six seven four five at two. Go now. The casement is open, and the stars wait outside. Steer for Vega through the night, into space toward the cold blue glare of Boreal Vega. HP Lovecraft, the do dream quest of unknown Kadath. I didn't know we were going to get a, a Lovecraft ref. Yes, Oma. Uh, oh. Peter Devore felt intense excitement when he first contacted Silink. We know this from personal monitor life support readouts of his physical state, hormonal balances, heart rate and respiration, electrolyte balance, enzyme production, and so on. All these things are on record. We think, though, that he did not, at least at first, know that he had contacted Silink at all. He thought he was in Wasatch. Keyword, family. Keyword, evoked potential. Peter had felt an impulse to track a correlation between certain electrical potentials in the brain and family history for any genetically determined patterns. His attention momentarily wandered, so he hadn't noticed he was not logged on to Wasatch. Interesting. Um, can I go back to history? Is that right, Homer? Is it, there's, ooh, okay, to foo, to UFU. Okay, let's read this other Vega entry first. Um, Vega mythology, re Devor Peter via Edmod, where 436745 had two. Vega is the weaving girl, and Altair is the herd boy. They were in love with one another, and neglected their duties to heaven, for which they were punished by being forever separated by the celestial river known as the Milky Way. Only once a year, on the seventh night of the seventh moon, they are allowed to meet when the river of stars is temporarily spanned by a bridge of birds. Huh. Intriguing. All right. Uh, all this other... Oh, ho, 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 ho. We'll save... We'll do two through first, and then we'll save ourselves the treat of reading about the history of the world from the year 2000 to the year 2019. Historical cultural data link entry to UFU. We devour Peter via Edmod. Ref 436745 at 2. See also Tao Yuan Ming and Wang Wei. Autumn Night by Tu Fu. Sp Wade, Gile Wade Giles Old Style. Not sure what that means is that the translation? Autumn night, silver candles. Autumn night, cool screen, soft silks. A tiny fan to catch the fireflies. On the stone stair, the night breathes water cool. I sit and watch the herd boy, and the weaving girl. Um, I think I mentioned in our first stream that uh, the um, the primary writer on this um, is a, is also a poet. So. Ah, there's the face of someone. Interesting. So we're going to get more history entries opening up here? Not yet. Interesting. Well, let's find out what happened from 2000 to 2009. I'm, I'm curious. Okay, 2000 to 2001. African war spreads to Mediterranean. Oh. Global Peace establishes Elite Neutralization Corps. None of this is sounding very good. Antarctic population reaches 10 million. Um, Washington DC Underground surface as historic park. Oh, hang on, I missed a bit there. Bimillennial Mars expedition ends in failure. 2002 to 2003. Mentor establishes Silink database. Oh. Okay, so um, I've forgotten the character's name briefly, but they invented Silink database. Second wave of Intercorp mergers, Mobile, Exxon, etc. Wasatch genetic data reaches critical mass. Interesting. Um, the idea of data critical mass is, is an interesting and relevant one. 
Mental receives Nobel Prize in Physics for Cyan Equations. Indian Famine. Unisex movement reaches 100,000 mark. LP5 established by Natural Life Society. Interesting. First Starship planned. Wow, okay. 2004-2005. Uh, ENC ends African war. Ooh, I don't like the sound of that at all. LP5-2 completed. First residence... Uh, oh, did I miss a line there? First residence. Oh, it has its first residence, maybe. Calcutta moves underground. Um, guide use probe launched to 61 Signy, May 24, 2004. That was us. Um, it was not a success, I'm, I'm sad to report. First suborbital salt cycle rocket plane flights. The second millennium movement, doctrine of genetic culpability sounds problematic. Uh, hibernation technology viable. Well, that's good. Maybe everybody's sleeping somewhere. That'd be alright, I think. It kind of depends what the people are like, I suppose. Um, 2006 to 2007, all but biodegradable buildings banned. Interesting. Australian Aborigine William Gulaley teaches lucid dream shaping. Interesting. Intercorp establishes first police. Satellite database networks finished. World net proposed. Interesting. So they do, they go into space and they have um, satellites and they do lucid dreaming um, and, and all that stuff before they get the internet. First mass produced liquid nitrogen and personal transports, okay. 2008 to 2009. Second, oh yeah, they would have been to Mars as well. Second Mars expedition launched. Unisex surgery performed on millionth person. What is this unisex thing they keep going about? Because it's, um, it's intriguing me and also sounding as, as problematic as some of the other things that are going on in this world. The new poverty movement goes underground. New poverty movement. Well, it seems like most things are going underground. Data crystal failure, Homer's face. Um, does that mean maybe that you're not telling me all of the truth, Homer? Whether intentionally or not. Well, let's read some more history. Because uh, this world is shaping up very strangely. So, in uh, between... 2010 and 2011, Antarctic was declared a sovereign state. I've no idea why there's so many people in Antarctic, or it's freezing cold. Uh, first organic memory molecule patented. Complete voice recognition and response in personal computers. Interesting. Elite new neutralization course signs contract with Intercorp board. Uh, so the private military, they become the private military. Uh, in inverted commas, peacekeeping force. 2012 to 2013, Soviet Union joins Agrobiotics Intercorp. So the Soviet Union gets rolled into some giant corporation. Near space declared nuclear free zone. Blimey. Third trans Antarctic safari led by Jules, Jules Sorel. Third Mars expedition, mining and research. Venus Bioseed Program ends in failure. Well, that's going to be a hard one, isn't it? 2014 to 15. E Cubed Society, first charter, energy, ecology, economy. Mind Museum proposed. Early neurophage weapons developed. They sound horrible. Reed Sable born, June 11th, 2014. Psychic Engineering Foundation. Uh, Psyche established in Baja. Let me just, is that what I've written down for Regent Sable? Let me check, because I'm, I'm curious if there's any clues to this information not being entirely Yeah, no, so the date we had for Regent Sable, which I took to be a date of birth um, was the 12th of the 12th, 2023 that's interesting. So either that's not what those dates mean, or some of this information isn't matching up. And while we're at it, let's just have a quick look at um, 
So mentor um, created Silink. Yeah, so they had Silink before they had World there, I think, in the, in the history that we've read, which seems uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, 2016 to 2017. Oh, hang on, I'm more clicking back. First Vega Starship begins construction. Mind Museum established in Cairo Forest Preserve. Cairo Forest Preserve, interesting. Meditative biofeedback technology widespread. Global population stabilized at 9 billion. Okay. Uh, personal monitor invented in 2018 to 19. What, the, the Fitbit? Worldwide reforestation program. We need that. Okay, and that's it. What's our picture? More data crystal failure, pixelated Homer face. Well, I mean, that was a that was a lot, wasn't it? Uh, right, I've kind of forgotten the thread of where we're going because that that took me all over the place. Um, we we're interested in Wanda, weren't we? Um, so, life support for Wanda? Oh, wow, we've got loads of people. Uh, Wanda Sislav. How are you, Wanda? Okay, you are probably alive. If things I think mean things mean things I think um, pop you on my list of characters um, and you potentially were born in 2026 so um, yeah you're just around the corner all right well let's have a look at these stats and see if there's any any kind of hints as to what's going on here. Um, okay, so uh, I'll just have a look through the patterns and see if there's any kind of up and downing that indicates anything in particular. Um, no, so far everything looks like it might be current and stable. Fairly stable. How's your tension level, Wonder? Increasing. Yeah, I don't know what the. Oh, so this is this is at seconds as well. So it's supposed to be like over the last. I don't know how many days. Twelve seconds or whatever. Interesting. Um, You look fine, I think, Wanda. Uh, that's my, my medical opinion. Um, I guess we'll work our way through. So Rand DeVore was one of the parents of Peter DeVore. Um, born. Oh, OK, so maybe born 2019 and still around. Interesting. I might, so I might not pop uh, ran in our um, information just yet. Okay, uh, I'm just going to click through these and see once again if there's any kind of patterns to indicate any particular uh, experience they might be going through. Oh, EEG is kind of increasing tension increasing so I do I'm kind of wondering if there's a, a drama going on in the background here that I don't have access to because all I can do is look at this computer screen and it's kind of abstracted ideas of what a person is and what their experiences are uh, Simi Malay, that was somebody's antecedent, wasn't it? Ah, uh, no longer with us. Okay. 
Um, I can't quite recall who's. So there's probably data here, and there's probably their, their last few seconds, which is a. Uh, Pretty morbid thought, really. Um, okay, respiration did take a dip there. Yeah, yeah, it does look kind of like somebody um, physically declining there, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Okay, their um, hmm. yeah, their neurotransmitters went the opposite direction to the other person we'd uh, looked at who had who had passed away. Interesting. Well, let's go back here. So that was Wasatch. Let's look at no, it's life support, wasn't it? Let's look at Wasatch. So let's go back to Wanda and look at Wanda's family tree. Um, okay, descended from the Jeffersons and Sislerfs. Um, what are you like, Wanda? Um, you've got quite a lot of ESP, a lot of fast twitch muscles. Not so many slow twitch muscles. Not much body fat. Okay. And a good all round uh, intelligence rating according to this system. So that's good. Um, let's check who was Peter related to. See me. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, so. Uh, okay, so presumably Simi's married name is Devore, uh, but she married Ran, and had they had Peter, and then Simi is no longer alive, but Ran is. That's what this seems to indicate. Okay. Um, so, ran. So we might be able to backtrack. Yeah. Interesting. So I wonder if by backtracking we get to see connections between family groups. So Hollandaise, I don't think we've seen connected to anything else before. Ran. Okay, not particularly high levels of anything there. Um, really good at maths. Um, good linguistic skills. Okay, and then see me. Ooh, um, descended from the Algon blouse. Again, who I don't think we've um, we've located anywhere else. ESP fat slow, lots of slow twitch muscles. Cool. Ooh, um, very very into music and languages, which is cool. Okay. <laughs> So that was Wasatch. Um, people also appear in psychology. So, Wanda. How are you doing? Emotionally. Um, quite mature. Not very hostile. With quite high self esteem. Okay. Uh, what were these again? 
Can I see that other red ones? I've forgotten what the abbreviations are. And that's oh hey, here it is. So we've got personal growth, introspection, and common sense. I don't know if I mentioned common sense last time. Reflection of logical and mechanical knowledge as well as interpersonal skills. Interesting. Okay. And yeah, yeah, things that seem to make sense there. Okay, let's have a look at RAN. Emulsion. Uh, increasing levels from maturity to acidity to self esteem, which uh, hmm, paints an interesting picture in my mind, anyway. Um, big personal growth. How can you just put a number on measure maturity rate over time of school age subjects? So more mature than fellow schoolmates, is that what that means? Um Okay, yeah, good at maths. So um yeah, so thinking about it, there's at least uh Four, four people I think we know about who, who are alive and out there somewhere. So, oh, low self-esteem, low hostility, high maturity. See me. Personal growth. We're pretty low across the board. Oh, see me. Um... Mm, you do love music, so okay. Right, I think that's that. That one accounted for. Let's check in with Edmod for the um, the same characters. So, uh, wonders and logic, math, deductive, inductive. Okay. Um, or uh, a pre fairly average, probably. Um, sure, those skills seem to reflect what we've seen before. Um, good long-term memory. I mean, pretty good all round, really. Um, social adjustment. Oh yeah, so that was... Where was that written down? So it's spatial, really good at spatial. Uh, the spatial stuff. Yeah, spatial orientation. The spatial thinking is good. Um, bit clumsy, maybe. Um, not so socially adjusted. Interesting. Interesting. Um, back to other people. Uh, Rand. So good at maths. Our uh, math isn't on that one. I'm pretty good at linguistics and writing. Memory. Ooh, amazing attention span. Great ability to learn. Um, pretty good short term memory. Not so good long term memory. And social adjustment. Hi, hi, highly social. Um, pretty good with your body, pretty good spatial awareness, okay, interesting. I guess bearing in mind that the social thing is being a leader as well as, um, you know, just being able to talk to people. See me Malay? Tell me, tell me more about see me. Okay, well, that's, that all seems perfectly good to me. Um... Great music skill, high linguistic skill, pretty artistic. Um, reasonable, reasonable attention span, short term and long term memories and learning ability. And social adjustment. Interesting. Better spatial awareness than bodily control than uh, and social adjustment. Interesting.
Well, that's that's all those folks, isn't it, that we've um, had a look at now. So I kind of wonder, is there anything in central processing for us to go back to? It's not at the moment. Intriguing. Um, I'm just going to check. I'm going to go through and check all of the, uh, the categories we haven't been to for a little while. Just see if there's anything hanging out there that we, we need to read about. Use a DNA two three four at four five seven five dash zero nine three. Silink reports zero five zero three two zero seven zero. Reality quotient shift relative user query as follows. Ah, uh, I was flashing us as well. Keyword family. Keyword evoked potential. Silink flags keyword concatenation in current sequence as reverse earlier query other user DNA number 234 at 4575093 which resulted in no RQ shift family evoked potential suggests possible basic research direction regarding mathematical manipulation of psychic space interesting Okay, we'll come out of that and then we'll open up Homer. Another Homer narration. Peter was drinking a glass containing a mixture of orange juice and strawberry yogurt. Hmm, not the most appealing combination. Earlier that day, he had read several poems for his language education programmes. Because he had proved quite resistant to religious programming, CP suggested Chinese poetry. Tu Fu's Autumn Night which ended, I sit and watch the herd boy and the weaving girl. The weaving girl, we have noted, as known in the Northwest Alliance, was as Vega. He finished the orange juice and yogurt and set the glass down in the edge of his console. Then he requested the routing for Wasatch. When he finished, he leaned back. His elbow knocked the glass onto the floor. He looked away from the hollow as Silink came online. Central processing sometimes can download information from life support and other databases. Perhaps we can fool CP into gathering information for us. Crafty Homer. Crafty. How did you know? Because you don't have like visual information on well, Peter, how do you know about the glass of orange juice and straw? Are you spinning me a tail, Homer? Hmm. I'll get to central processing, don't you worry. Okay, nothing new in SciTech. History? Probably nothing. We're not too much in history for a while because we've just unlocked a lot. Military. We haven't had anything in history yet. Hmm. Sorry, in military, yeah. Okay, oh yeah, we've done, done life support. Geography, that might be a good one to come back to. I'm going to tell me about this amazing Antarctican community. Um, Alright, I think we're ready for central processing then. Telemetry, ref one two five six five four. Central processing, 
ref one two five six five four WS uh, stroke code nine append ref two life support. Wonder tasted strawberries, the colour of stars splashed through tears of laughter. She could not move, of course, locked in chemical stasis, but her subtle body stirred, feeling the cool touch of glass under her fingertips. She drank again, and the colours drained away into the smell of orange rind. She closed her eyes, already closed, and darkness swam through her belly, uncoiling not unkindly a warm, pervasive time. She felt an almost unbearable pang as the aroma of orange faded. That's very strange, very, very subjective experience. Central processing ref 83641 WS stroke code 9 append ref 2 life support. Hello, he said. Where are you? she asked, not knowing. Springfield West, he said. I think. Wanda looked at her body, frozen. This is very, very narrative, Homer. Are you. What are you doing? Where's this information coming from? You see how it is. The data forms small clots around some event. The algorithms concatenate, condense. Scenes form, but I can't go on like this. Perhaps I should begin with Peter, then, at the beginning, at the moment when he put his glass of orange juice and strawberry yoghurt down on the console, the drink his mother, Simi, had just brought him. OK. Peter then, a shy child who worked better with the artefacts of his environment than with the humans around him, moved through his family's sub-warren. Overhead, Springfield West sprawled, its meadows, its towers. His environment is lush today. Simi has programmed forest, the scents and sounds that fill the rooms. Peter stood in the archway between kitchen and den. Mom, he said. She glanced up from her console, finger to lips. A moment, she said, her chin nodding with the unheard sounds. I just need to finish the coda. The induction probes were activated. She was Mozarting as usual. Peter stared at the topside hollow. Man with the hoe. It was a real-time relay from a vast garden. In the middle distance, a man working with slow measured strokes of his hoe. Peter often watched that man on days when the weather was fine. As now, someone had chosen gardening full time. Peter knew this was strange, yet he had often felt wistful about that man. I see them there, like that, Peter staring at the hollow, and see me wrapped in the induction sensorium, as if it were a scene, the beginning of the story. Hmm. Okay, more more stuff. Geneva node reference two eight four six oh four. Central processing Geneva node was housed in a former cistern clump complex occupying seventeen acres. Primitive parallel processors were replaced in the late twenty forties by grown crystal organics. All local and regional nodes are controlled from Geneva, which manages not only data traffic by alternate database entry, but also prescribed coding. OK, that's some kind of map, maybe an overhead view or cross-sectional view. And then Edmod data reference 01. Hmm. Zero four two 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 zero seven zero. Find correlations between genetic parallel mitochondrial DNA. <gasps> oh no! Is this is this midichlorians? Is this the Phantom Menace? Uh, five prime Tata sequencing and EEG delta and theta potentials over five year span. Create and run equations to prove or disprove correlations. Okay. 
that's asking for something, clearly. Well, that's interesting. So when does all that leave us? Homer? Okay. Ooh. Oh, interesting. So, all the messages we've been getting from Homer have been Homer N A R R 1 uh, with a uh, code afterwards. And now we're at Homer N A R R 2. Almost as if this were a second chapter of something. So, this is dash SD um, stroke PD ref at 5402. Well, then, Peter's mother said, What's the problem? She had always been embarrassed by her mother's choice. Her mother's choice. Hmm. It has to do with the databases, I think. I can't find the information I need to complete the calculations. I'd have a chance to contribute, you know, something new we might be able to determine family relationship from EEG potentials. Certain brainwave patterns, that is, would correlate. But the genetic information isn't available in the Edmod databanks. Oh, she laughed. She was already turning back to her Mozart. Try Wasatch. Everything's on record there from 2008 or forward. Before that, are partial genealogical records that go way back. She activated the probes and went back to inductive composition. Okay. So that's kind of this. We've had the scene play out where whatever the inciting incident for everything that's happened since has uh, has occurred. Um, but where do we go from here? Um, SciTech? We don't seem to have advanced past the um, that initial concatenation, do we? Oh, Mozart! Oh, now we get an entry on Mozart. That's cool. Let's see what the uh, database has to say about it. General Science Technology Information. Current entry, Mozart. Mozart. Mozarting. To Mozart. Mozart technology has had a long development, since it was essentially a blend of numerous divergent sciences. At the core of the Mozart console was a fifth generation BioCybernon machine, a device used in the late 1980s and early 1990s for full sensory spectrum biofeedback. Again, before the internet, they... <laughs> They invented that before the internet. Primary uses were meditation and health. Later, combined with personal monitors, crystal probes, holographic synesthesia projection, and external limbic system activation, the Mozart console developed into the primary performance art form since the late 2060s. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> get lost, VR. Named after an ancient musical composer said to have the ability to hear and remember full orchestral composition, in his head, and to transcribe them by hand onto ancient fibre-based media without flaw. That is not sure what that image is actually. Uh, maybe the um, device that you would Mozart with. Well, that's cool. So we got a uh, quite a nice detailed. I think it's a more detailed description than we got in the uh, the manual, um, which I read last time we played. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what directions to, to pull in now. I guess back to central processing maybe. But I think we're um, probably getting close to uh, end of stream time. So I'll what I'll do is I'll do a run through of all the categories. And, um, See, see what new things there are to discover, and then unless there's um, yeah, I expect there'll only be one or two things probably um, we can read those, and then we'll, we'll call a call a halt to it for now. Okay, so nothing new in this top row of categories. Um, it'd be interesting if military or geography dropped in at this point. I guess, are there any new people around? 
Not that we know of. Okay. Ooh, got a Geneva map. Um, twenty seventy five. In the year twenty seventy five, that would make sense. Um, yeah, Geneva map twenty seventy five A.D. World Geodetic Survey. Approved. Intercorp Headquarters and Council Tower. Okay. Doesn't look very detailed. Um, just a few blocks wide. Okay. Interesting. Well, we've unlocked some geography, which is, is no, no bad thing, I don't think. We'll have lots of bow lakes in no time. So I think I can probably miss out the... safely miss out all the character related categories because we don't seem to have um, uncovered anything new there so it would be central processing at home to go back to nothing new there okay I guess it's home we need to talk to oh it is inserted before the one we read previously. So this is um, NAR2, this is PDRF 5401. There, Simi said, opening her eyes. The probes deactivated and she swiveled toward him. What is it, Peter? What? Oh, uh, where's Dad? Let me check. She turned toward the console, a lovely unselfconscious gesture. Really a half twist in her chair, and reached. Geneva, she said. He's in Geneva, council business. She, she smiled, made another gesture. He'll be back tomorrow night. Bye. She looked at Peter curiously. Nothing, he said. I just wondered. Bored? She tilted her head. He shrugged. A little, I've got a problem too, and I'm stuck. Can I help? I don't know, he said doubtfully. It's a little techy. She smiled. I do have some expertise, she said, gesturing at the Mozart console. Yeah, I know, but you're a, you know, an artist. It's a family science problem. He paused, looked at her, then continued. I've organised all the data, but I'm sort of stuck. You used to tell stories about Grandma Malay. How she could sometimes know things before they happened, trying to determine if there's any correlation with certain mitochondrial DNA segments and EEG potentials. Simi sighed. Well, she said, looking away. She was, you know, one of them. Yes, I know that, he said impatiently. I don't care that she was a unisex convert. This unisex thing, crikey. Well, I think, so, oh, okay, that that makes sense of what we read there. So that makes sense of why Simi had been embarrassed by her mother's choice. So mother's choice was to become unisex, which, I don't know, I'm guessing means non-gendered, but... Uh, also with a change of physical characteristics would be my guess um, oh Astora Malay was Simi's mother she wouldn't have become a unisex convert until after she had children of course since converts were sterile Worldnet's historical database would have further information on some of these topics thank you Homer Alright, let's find out about unisex then. I think that's where we're headed. Yep. Unisex ref 436745 at 2. Yeah, so let's read that and then the history of the world between 2020 and 2029. Um, uh, and yeah, and then we'll finish there. Historical cultural data entry. Unisex read Devore Peter via Edmod. 
Ref oh, oh blow me. Uh, home is flashing again. Ref four three six seven four five at two. Unisex. Aberrant surgical alteration technique developed in the late twentieth century allowed so called converts to experience their sexuality from the point of view of both genders. See hermaphroditism from which unisex conversion differs in several major respects, not least of which is the availability on demand of the generative organs of either sex. Okay, unisex converts were always referred to by the neuter pronoun it. Oh, I don't, uh, yeah, that's that seems like a whole mess of stuff. So they... had availability to the generative organs of males and females uh, okay um, but it's been oh come on let's talk to Homer Peter was lying when he said he didn't care his grandmother had been one of the last to demand the surgery, long after she'd given birth to Peter's mother. One moment she was a woman, the next she was a guardian of the neutral pronoun, an it. It now had been dead for thirty years, yet Peter often thought about it, what it must have been like to experience sexuality from both sides, he being fourteen, with the changes of puberty well upon him. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here, so excuse me if I stumble a bit. The Edmod computers monitored all adolescents carefully, of course. Biochemistry and intrapsychic functioning were well within standard limits. There was something wistful about his fantasies of a grandmother he never met, though. Then, too, there were the stories. Family stories of strange events. A hundred years earlier, they would have been far stranger of out-of-body experiences, of precognitive dreams, of sudden onsets of total empathy. Many of these stories centred around his grandmother, a surgically altered hermaphrodite. Some of her stats are on file in life support and psychology databases. Okay, that's pointing us to somewhere to go later on. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot, isn't it? Let's see what the history thing is. 2020 to 2021. Language and Culture Preservation Act passed by First Intercorp Council. Unmanned probes arrive at Saturn. Um, system February 21st, 2021. Jimmy Radix born. Who's Jimmy Radix? Uh, August the 22nd, 2021. Antarctic Republic Social Experiment in Culture Design, 2022-23, first satcom world net. You what? First satellite internet? Northern Hemisphere Information Economy Charter. Major manufacturing centres in Brasilia and Singapore. Open Space Act from E-Cubed. 2024-25, so we're moving into uncharted waters now. Global population begins unexpected baby boom. Green Desert, that one might come true actually. Green Desert program results in widespread feast, then famine. Okay. Satellite World Net completed, continues to grow for next 65 years. 2026 to 2027, Wanda Six Love Born, April the 9th. Huh? Oh. Interesting. This is. I think there is data corruption here, because we've seen Wanda described as Wanda C. Slurf, um, but she's been interpreted as six love here, but same birthday. Interesting. Axion equations. What about the axion equations? Illegal personal violence passes threshold. What? What threshold? World median age at 50. Okay. Second Mormon migration to LP54. 
last nuclear plant decommissioned. Yes, please, let's get those things uh, decommissioned. Um, yeah, well, I think we're going to leave it there for today because we've, I think, we covered a lot of ground. Um, I don't know how much more of the story there is. It feels like we've only just scratched the surface, really, which is quite tantalising. Um, so the unisex thing, right? So I think this is this is a world that has interpreted um, gender as primarily biological um, and primarily binary. So it's it's trying to tackle being something other than binary through surgical combination of um, of different sexual organs, which I mean it's an interesting thing. But then obviously people don't get to choose their pronouns and are pretty much derided afterwards um, so that's a whole that's a whole heap of things really I guess we'll find out slightly more about um, uh, Peter's grand grandparent um, next time so uh, join us join us for them there's there's definitely a lot to dig into here. Um, and I'm still really enjoying the, um, the kind of lightly directed uh, way in which it unfolds. I think um, I think the intertextuality um, element is is working really well. I think there's actually quite a strong sense of personality coming from Homer as this kind of um, semi-failing, uh, fractured, uh, maybe a bit desperate AI that's. That's trying to claw onto um, memory, but also is weaving a weaving a story around us as well. Very interesting. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, I won't sit and pondering that for very long. I just want to thank everybody for joining me. Let's. I'll just uh, check in. Oh, check in. Uh, if there's anybody in chat. Yeah, there's loads of names there, so I'll just do a little shout out to everybody who's uh, who's in the chat. Uh, human or bot, you're all welcome. Thank you for not spamming, and uh, thank you for not saying anything hateful. You are always welcome to say hello, and share your thoughts, um, as long as they be be kind and uh, and positive and hopefully progressive thoughts. So we have say hello to zero uh, ax two, another TV viewer. I think you're a nice a nice bot that turns up every now and again. Elysian, Feet, Lucaley, Lurks, Rogirl with a one, and the one I couldn't pronounce before, Sweet Clubberville or So Way Clubberville. Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, th thank you all, all one and all humans, bots alike. Thank you for joining me for another session of Portal. My plan is to come back next week at the same time. So that's next Thursday, which let me just check what date it will be. 28th, won't it? Be the 28th. Same time. So 7.30 p.m. Uh, British summer time. And my plan will be to do another two hours of Portal and see where we get to. It's a, it's a fascinating thing. Um, especially in retrospect. Now it is, is fairly old and we've lived through some of the future history that is already written. It... Yeah, it's got an interesting texture, for sure. Um, yeah, so join me on this channel again this time next week. Um, you can follow me on Twitch to be notified when I go live. You can check out my YouTube channel. Uh, there's a growing number of Let's Plays on there. Currently, um, Let's Playing uh, Divine Divinity and... What am I Let's Playing? June 1992, uh, June, by Cry Interactive, which is kind of half-adventure game half um, real-time strategy game. Very interesting. Um, so you can find both of those series on there. There's other adventure gamey, role-playing things on there. All sorts of bits and bobs. Um, and you can you can have a look there. Um, I have, yeah, I have various other contact information on my Twitch page if you wanted to, uh, to check me out there. And um, yeah, until next time, take care everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>